Welcome back. Clinical trials are an essential component of healthcare, yet lack of diversity in clinical trials is a serious issue with significant health implications. Dr. Randall Morgan is the health disparities expert and president and CEO of the Cobb Institute. And Ramona Burris is director of diversity and inclusion and clinical trials at Janssen. We're going to talk today about why it's vital for all populations of people to be included when researching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for joining me. Uh, let me start with you, Dr. Morgan. Why is it important to have diversity in clinical trials? Well, a clinical trial is a research study, Audrey, and it answers specific research questions uh, related to new medications and can also help us to learn more about a certain health condition. And we have learned over the years how important it is to have all sexes, ages, races, ethnicities, and even demographics uh, re uh, represented in our clinical trials because our bodies can react differently based on these factors and including many different types of clinical trials that will show how effective and safe a medication or therapy can be for those who need it. And as you're researching new medications to help address an issue, uh, does that mean that medications work differently in different populations? Yes, they do. And the more that we learn through these focused studies and clinical trials, the more we're able to have diverse clinical trials for every pharmaceutical uh, agent uh, that is being studied, the more we understand the differences and the reactions of these medications to different individuals. So how do clinical trials work and how do people find out about and get involved in clinical trials? The most common way that people know about clinical trials is by referral, either through their primary care physician or maybe a specialist who's treating them for a particular uh, problem. And these physicians must have some contact and knowledge of clinical trials, and they also must have confidence in the fact that the clinical trials will be safe for their patients. And as a result, patients are referred. Occasionally, they may be referred uh, by others in their family or even by publicity uh, for specific conditions that they themselves feel they can benefit from a clinical trial. But most people will not volunteer to be in a clinical trial without the encouragement of a trusted voice. Ramona, what's being done to help improve diversity in clinical trials? Yeah, thank you, Audrey, for that great question. So as Dr. Morgan mentioned, our bodies process medications differently. And so at Janssen, as we're developing medications to treat, uh, prevent, or even cure health conditions and diseases, it's important that we include all patients. And so unfortunately, what we found is there continues to be underrepresentation, particularly when we look at patients of color in our research trials. So it really starts with partnership and going out to provide resources to eliminate some of the barriers. Uh, so partnerships with leaders like Dr. Morgan and then creating programs like Research Includes Me, where it allows us to have a platform that we're giving information to the community to thus empower them to make those difficult and, and sometimes challenging healthcare decisions. Tell us more about the Research Includes Me program. Yeah, so it's a great program. It has a website that allows, again, the user to go in and learn more about the nuances of how the clinical trial process works, uh, distinguishing between the different phases in clinical research, reaffirming how safety is a priority and how participants have their rights uh, protected in the space, and actually has a search engine where folks can go in and kind of see what are some local opportunities to participate in research. But again, it gives them that information that allows that continued conversation with their primary healthcare physician or healthcare provider so that they find, you know, the best opportunity for them. All right, so let's talk about why some people might be hesitant to participate in clinical trials, especially uh, if they have their own issues with the healthcare system or the medical system. How would you address that? Well, this conversation here is a good start, yeah, right, Dr. This Morgan? Is, uh, exactly. It has to be done gradually uh, for any type of uh, concern regarding clinical trials because there is so much evidence that uh, different people have been victimized through the years 
uh, because of trials which were not uh, conducted with the appropriate uh, consent and with the concern for the patients or the individuals and for their uh, outcome. And once we are able to satisfy individuals that there are many, many improvements and uh, modifications in the clinical trial process now that protect their safety. And also they understand that they are in control and can opt in or opt out of a clinical trial at any time. This has begun to show uh, great uh, results and uh, to allay many of the fears that historical uh, evidences have uh, affected people in the past. Well, there was a mention earlier that uh, your healthcare provider might also suggest a clinical trial that might be available. How important is that relationship with your healthcare provider in you possibly participating in a clinical trial? It's absolutely key. And this is why through our affiliation with the National Medical Association, um, an organization that uh, uh, represents the, <clears throat> the interests of over 50,000 uh, African-American physicians, uh, many of whom are in primary care. Uh, they are important to the diversification of clinical trials and uh, in fact are also at work trying to uh, develop methods where more of their patients are able to be a part of the clinical trial process. Dr. Morgan, what would you say to someone who's hesitant to join a clinical trial? I would say that the clinical trial can provide information for them about themselves, that the clinical trial can provide excellent clinical care for them, and in some cases, very valuable medication that otherwise would be extremely expensive, and that they will have all of their questions answered and they will also be able to review information from other clinical trials so that they can see how the process works. And Ramona? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Morgan, for that. You know, I really think that it starts with having conversations like this. So, Audrey, thank you for allowing us this space to, to talk and to speak because it's really about partnership and collaboration and really empowering communities, which are full of patients and caregivers, with the information that's needed, again, via platforms such as our, our, our website, Research, Research Includes Me, where we're really dispelling some of the misinformation that's out there. But, you know, re research has a complicated history in many communities. Um, and so the more that we can go out there and use subject matter experts such as Dr. Morgan and many other clinicians and physicians to be that sounding board of there's good science, there's good opportunity, and let's have honest conversations about how we can drive to make sure that we have of uh, clinical research. All right. So, guys, you know, I always say informs empowered. Uh, check out Research Includes Me for more information about clinical trials. And as always, uh, speak with and seek counsel from your doctor or healthcare provider. My guests have been health disparities expert Dr. Randall Morgan and Ramona Burris, Director of Diversity and Inclusion and Clinical Trials at Janssen. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Audrey. And thank you, Audrey, for having us today.